Hi gang, this is Eric White. I am going to discuss uploading and downloading documents into the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript using HTML5 today. In previous screencasts, I showed how you can upload and download documents using the little flash module that enables you to do this. In other words, enables you to upload a document into local JavaScript variables and to save a document from local JavaScript variables to your local hard drive. This is the approach that you need to take if you are using a down-level browser that doesn't support HTML5. To be honest, in retrospect, this isn't that important these days given that now HTML5 supports uploading and downloading documents in a very capable fashion, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you today. And also, the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript works best with one of these new JavaScript engines, i.e. Chakra in the case of Internet Explorer or V8 in the case of Chrome. It really takes advantage of all of the speed that you get with these new JavaScript VMs as opposed to older JavaScript engines. Well, let's go take a look at uploading and downloading using HTML5. There are two main approaches that you can use to upload and download using HTML5. And in the distribution, there are two examples that show each of these ways. Example seven shows kind of the simplest way that you can use HTML5 to upload and download. And example eight shows a way where you can create a better look and feel for your end users if you so need to do that. Let's look at example seven. When you run the example, what you see up here in the upper left corner is the default look and feel when you use an input object with the type of file input. You get this funny looking control over here that has a text box combined with a browse button. And you can click on the browse button, click on the document, modify the document. And then when you click the save button, you get the standard approach to downloading a document that you see when you're clicking on links in other web pages. You get this dialog down here at the bottom in Internet Explorer. I can then save it like that. When you're using Visual Studio to run your application, you can grab this URL up there and paste it into Chrome or Firefox. And basically, you're running the exact same application that is served up by the little development internet server that runs when you use Visual Studio 2010 or 2012 to run an application. Instead of getting the dialog box that Internet Explorer gives you, Chrome gives you this downloads bar down here. And here you can show it in the folder. And it'll show up in whatever folder that you have set up for your downloads folder in Chrome. And walking through the code quickly, up here at the top, we have the input with the ID of file input. And the type is file, and the on change method is process files, and you pass in this dot files. And down here we have the standard code that you use to process files that are opened by that input control. The button modify is a standard HTML5 or HTML button. And the save button, this is worth discussing for one second. It has a button that calls the method save document. And save document calls this method save as. And save as is what is brought in by this file saver.js module. 
file saver is this project on GitHub that enables saving generated files on the client side. It's really super. It works well. It's licensed under an MIT style license, which is compatible with the needs that we have for building little JavaScript applications that have OpenXML functionality. Example eight, it's similar, but there's one minor modification. Let's run it and I'll show you what the difference is. The difference is that the open, modify, and save buttons all have the look that you want for your entire application. There is a fair amount of consensus that the file input control is not the best in terms of a design element. People who are into design don't like the look of that particular control. So here you can have your button look like whatever you want to. You can click the open button, modify, save, So the way that this is coded is up here at the top div, there is the input control that has an ID of file input and its type is file. And if we look in the CSS section up here at the top, we have that control with the ID of file input. It's not displayed. It has the display property set to none. And instead, we put up a regular button right here and make it look like whatever we want it to look like. It calls this method open document. Open document turns around and just calls the click method on the file input control. When the click method is called, it calls process files, passing in this.files. And after that, everything else works exactly as it does with example seven. That's all I'm going to cover in this video, short and sweet. Talk to you later.